Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Sporting Max. But today we're joined by WNBL Canberra Capital star and NBL One record holder with 54 points, Keely Froling. Welcome to the podcast, Keely. It's an honour to have you on. How are you? Hi, Max. Thanks for having me. Um, I'm very good, thank you. Um, now, growing up in a big uh, sporting family, your dad played NBL, um, I believe, and you have two younger brothers and also your sister involved in the sport. What was growing up uh, like for you? Yeah, um, obviously a big sporting family. Um, Dad played NBL and mum played WNBL as well and obviously all the siblings play. So I think it was really awesome because um, we always got to compete against each other and obviously having parents that know the game so well, um, you know, you always could go to them for advice and get training and, you know, there was some long car trips home where... (laughs) Uh, there was definitely some tears, but, um, you know, I think it, it's showing now how um, how that, that's really helped us. And then obviously competing against your siblings every day. Nobody wants to be the worst. Sibling, <laughs> so it's pretty competitive. So what was it like growing up uh, having a twin sister? Yeah, awesome. Um, obviously, when we played together, it was great. Um, you know, we could... Um, just play so well together and we knew it knew each other's game inside out and um also really competitive too though because when you're a twin everyone compares you and everyone you know oh who's better who's this always asking that so (laughs) there is that side of it where it's like oh just like let us play and let us you know be our own players because we are so different but um yeah it was it's awesome now how did you get people um to know your name before signing with your home townsville fire alongside your twin sister in 2011 yeah, so um, obviously Towns is quite a small town. So when you grow up there, most people know um, who you are. And um, I played from when I was nine years old and dad was a big part of the basketball community. So um, for us, it was just normal to kind of go around town and everyone knows he plays basketball. It also helps when you're a huge family and you're over six foot tall, everyone. So <laughs> everyone's like, oh, if they don't know that you do play basketball, they assume. Mm-hmm. Um, now... Pulling on the green and gold um, at the under-16s Oceania Championships in Canberra in 2011, how did that feel, um, I guess, to represent your country for the first time? Yeah, that was a really special time for me. Um, You know, I hadn't played for Australia yet and I knew that was a goal and something that I was working for. So um, just a really special memory. And I think I still play with a lot of those girls now. I play against them and some of them are my best friends. So it's really nice that we had that experience together when we were under 16s and now we're still playing, you know, 10 years later and I'm still wearing those colours too. So what was that experience like being um, a kid playing in um, sort of national championships? Yeah, it was awesome. Um, and always an awesome opportunity when you get to go against the best people in the country and then in the world. So um, you, it's like you can never learn anything like that from training. You only get it from game experience. And um, I feel like every time I did it, I learned a bit more and, you know, could work on things. And it also kind of, you know, where you're at at that level because you keep playing against the best. Um, now, winning gold um, on home soil. Can you elaborate on that experience? Yeah, it was awesome. Um, Obviously, we were trying to qualify for a world um, championship, which we did, which was nice. But it was cool to play um, in Canberra um, in front of uh, home fans and to be the first time representing your country. You probably didn't realise how special it was. Um, (laughs) Now, I look back and I don't think I've played for Australia since in my own country, which is um, crazy. But, yeah, it is. it was a great opportunity and a great experience and I think you've learned so much from it. Um, now, where and when did you um, sort of see the opportunity um, of going over to America to play college? Um, that opportunity all sort of present itself. Yeah, so after I think Worlds was when I had a lot of um, colleges approach me and obviously it was a, a relatively new pathway. People had started to do it and, um, you know, I spoke a lot with my family and we kind of decided that we'd give it a crack and see how we um, yep. went. And obviously Alicia and I were going to go together, so that made it easier. But then, um, yeah, it ended up not working out for me, um, which I think in the end worked well because now I've kind of been able to paved my career here in Australia but I think for us we kind of went over with the mindset that if it doesn't work out we can always come home but Mm -hmm. and the WNBL and that's always going to be there but you only get that college experience and opportunity once. Now I'm playing two years at Southern Methodist University in Dallas can you expand um, on the college experience for you? Yeah, it was a crazy experience. It's a whole nother world over in America, um, <laughs> wise, and it's just 
crazy and um, there were also some really some really good aspects of it but also some really awful aspects and I actually didn't love my experience over there. Um, I had two really big knee injuries when I was over there and I ended up having a couple of surgeries um, and that really set me back and I just ended up wanting to be at home and wanting to be with um, reliable medical people that I trusted so um, that kind of drew me back to Australia and I also wanted to study um, physiotherapy so for me um, the pros of being over there didn't outweigh the cons so I decided to come home. Um, now after college you joined the Canberra Capitals um, back in the WNBL did you know did you sort of notice a change um, in the style between college ball and in the WNBL? Yeah absolutely um, the WNBL is a whole couple of steps up from college um, in everything that we do um, professionalism and playing obviously and um, you know I think a lot of people forget that the WNBL is you know one of the top two or three leagues in the world and you play yeah. against the best players and um, we always have great imports and obviously awesome Australian players that hang around and play so um, it was just you couldn't even compare it to college experience. Um, now in 2017 yourself and the Opals won gold at the Summer University Aid in Taiwan. How did you find playing in a tournament? And can you open up about the emotions being processed when you get that winning feeling? Yeah, that was an awesome experience. And probably, you know, those two university games that we've won gold have been my best um, highlights of my career in Australian colours. And um, it's uni games is funny because um, a lot of times you go over there without having any training. They pick a team based off of how you're performing in various leagues around the world. And to win that one, especially that first one, I think no one had won it since the 90s. No Australian team had won it since the 90s. And um, we went over there, we knew we had a really good team, but we knew it was going to be a tough run. And um, to come away with that gold medal was awesome. It was in front of, um, we played Taiwan in the semi-final and uh, there was like 18,000 fans there all cheering against us, which was <laughs> crazy. Um, and then in the grand final, we played Japan and um, we beat them and um, there was still tons of fans there and they, they, a few of them were cheering for us that time. So it was nice, but it just was a phenomenal experience and um, something that I just treasure. Um, now, I believe you played in that 2018-19 um, Capitals Championship. What was the championship experience like for you? Yeah, just crazy, you know, getting that sort of experience. And we had such a great team, um, that, you know, both of those championships, but especially that first year, we just had um, all-stars kind of from everywhere and great imports and Kia Nurse, but then also some awesome um, Australian players and, you know, Kelsey Griffin, your Mariana Tolos, your Leilani Mitchells, like just players that know how to play the game and know how to win. And I think that's kind of where I really, first of all, saw the training habits that are needed to be at that level and really started to make a difference in my game where, um, you know, I could start making the impact and kind of take that next step at that level. So um, that was just a great team. And I look back, like, it's just awesome. We had so much fun that year. Um, and then obviously to win it as well was just incredible. Now you mentioned that, uh, that second championship, did you know, did you think you might've, um, I guess, appreciated that second chip? Uh, second championship more than the first? Yeah, absolutely. That second championship was hard. Uh, the first year I said, you know, we kind of had that team that was just an all-star team and we knew from the start we should win. Obviously, you have to do all the work to get the win, but it was kind yeah. of expected of us. And that second year, we lost some of those big players, you know, your Leilani, Kelly Wilson, we lost some of them. And then the whole year we were fighting with injuries. Kelsey went down with an injury. I had um, broke my nose. Tolo was sick and injured. We were in and out. Oh, um, I know coming into the first semi-final match, Tolo had this awful cold mm -hmm. um, and she wasn't allowed to be around the team or training for the whole week before. And we didn't know if she was going to play or not. You know, like it just was this really hard fought championship season. And um, for us to come out on top, which wasn't expected because obviously you had those other teams that kind of, they were the teams that should win it. Um, and we just stuck around. And I think that makes it more more special because we have had to work so hard for it and fight for it and um you know at the, at the end of the season it was just this huge sigh of relief that we got through the season really and we'd done so well so yeah two totally different championships but I think the second one was more special um can you elaborate on what it's like um to watch your two brothers Harry and Sam dominated in the NBL and then your sister Alicia play 
um, having them all play at an elite level of basketball um, at their respective clubs. Yeah, it's awesome um, to see how far they've come and I think still see what future they have ahead of them. So um, to see Harry and Sam both doing so well in the NBL now and um, I'll try and watch every game possible. Um, I actually don't I lo- don't like watching as much as I like playing because <laughs> when I can't do anything, I'm like, oh, gosh. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it's great to see. And, you know, I think they have such huge careers ahead of them. And for Alicia, she had a really rough run there at the end of her college career. Just to see her now back in the WNBL and playing NBL one and doing really well, I think, is awesome. And it's nice um, to know kind of where we've come from in our backyard um, playing on the basketball hoop to now playing in professional leagues around Australia is cool. Now, I believe you're the captain um, for the Launceston Tornadoes um, this NBL one season. What's involved um, in your roles and responsibilities as captain? Yeah, so um, leadership something that I've been working on kind of the last couple of years under obviously some really great guidance of Mariana Toller and Kelsey Griffin. They're pretty good people to learn off how to do that job. Um, and now I get to do that in the tornadoes. So for me, um, first of all, it's about being the hardest worker. I'll try and lead by example. Um, so making sure I'm putting in all the extra work, going hard in the gym, going hard at training. Um, but then also being someone that the you know, the young girls and other girls in the team can come to and ask, um, they have questions about, you know, gameplay or what they need to do to get better or that sort of thing, that kind of mentoring role as well I'm trying to take on. So um, it's easy with the Tornadoes because we are such an awesome group um, and the girls are great and I think they really respect me, which is nice. Um, But yeah, just trying to be that um, voice for them and that leader for them and just lead by example and get us to where we want to go, which is a championship. Um, now, you made the record books this season for the most points scored in an NBL one match with an insane 54 points. Can you expand on this game um, through your eyes? Yeah, um, well, I definitely wasn't expecting to have 50 points or <laughs> whatever it was. Um, but it's funny because um, earlier in, I think, the first game of the season against Hobart, I had a really high scoring first half and then um, Scott Roth who's the new Jack Jumpers head coach was in the crowd and he after the game I've been working with him a little bit and he always gives me some feedback and after the game he said I'm disappointed because I thought you were going to get 50 Um, (laughs) I think I ended up with 44 or something that game or 42 and um, so this game I think I had the same thing I had a pretty good start to the first half and I thought I've got to keep going because I have to get 50 or Scott will say something again Um, (laughs) and obviously you know the our my players and our team, my teammates really know where to get me the ball and they know where I like my shots. Um, and it helps when our coach runs a lot of sets for me. So I do get a lot of the shots. Um, but yeah, it just, just kind of happened. And I think I got to 48 and then I was on 48 for like four. It felt like a whole quarter, but it was <laughs> um, trying to get that 50. And I missed, I don't know how many shots, maybe four or five, trying to get that 50th point. So then when I finally got it, I was like, oh, thank goodness. I can- <laughs> Chill out now, like, <laughs> sub me out. <laughs> um, you mentioned before working with the new Jack Jumpers coach, Scott Roth. What's that like to work with such an experienced, a high-level coach like him? Yeah, he's been awesome, and I think he's going to be awesome in the NBL for the Jack Jumpers, but also for basketball in Tasmania. Um, he's really engaged with the community, and you can see that, obviously, with the Tornadoes. He mm-hmm. um, is in contact, um, constant contact with our coach, Sarah, and, you know, in contact with me and doing some working, uh, doing some work out with us and some of the other girls so um, it's just great to have someone that has that experience but then is also so willing to give up that time um, and you know give back to the community um, that he's going to be based in so um, yeah I'm really excited to see how the Jack Jumpers go. What's it like um, for you preparing uh, for Tokyo this year and what's your current schedule on a daily basis? Yeah so it's pretty exciting Um, you know preparing for an Olympics is not yeah. something a whole lot of people can say. So um, I've been working really hard um, in the gym cup three or four times a week, but then shooting and doing individuals every day, obviously then our team training um, and we're playing a couple games as well. So um, for me, it's two or three sessions every day, trying to get in as many shots as possible, or also working on all sorts of moves. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we're in training camp at the moment and we're heading off to Austria um, to qualify yeah. hopefully fingers crossed uh, <laughs> this week so yeah we have to go um, top top three at a 20 team tournament and wow. we get our ticket otherwise it's 
go home. <laughs> so it's exciting and also a little bit daunting. And I think once we get over there, that's when the nerves really start to kick in. So assuming that you guys make Tokyo and get through the qualifiers, what are you sort of most excited about going to Tokyo? Oh, I think just being Olympic Games. Like, obviously, um, that's where we want to go. And then once we get over that, this qualifying hurdle, we're aiming for a gold medal. And I think that's something that we can achieve. Um, but just, you know, that being that Olympic Games, it's something you dream of and um, think about when you're a kid, um, to, you know, your whole career, that's um, just what you always dream of. So just to be able to achieve that would be just phenomenal. Uh, what would be your advice to any aspiring uh, female basketballers out there who want to take their game um, to the next level and be a successful basketballer like yourself? Um, I think the biggest thing is working really hard, um, you know, making sure you show up to every session on time. You're always putting in the work. And I think realising too that it's not always going to be easy. There's going to be bumps in the road in everyone's career. Um, you know, I had almost two years out from the game with massive knee injuries and, um, you know, they're huge bumps and that that's what happens. There's injuries happen in sport, things happen, life gets in the way, but there's always, there's always, there's always something you can be working on. Um, even if you're in a big knee brace and on crutches um, and there's and you can always the hardest workers usually end up being the best players and there's a reason for that thanks Keely for uh, coming on the podcast today and putting aside um, some of your time to come on and have a chat it's been a pleasure thank you so much for having me thanks Keely stay tuned everyone for some more sporting max